Can we cook mac and cheese with less power, energy, and water, and mostly hands off? Can we use a small power station like a Blue Eddy EB3A with a small inverter paired with an extremely efficient induction cooktop to cook the mac and cheese? The answer is yes. Let's find out how and how much energy and water were saved. Welcome friends and welcome back to Katie's Camp Kitchen and welcome to the Mac and Cheese Challenge. As we are getting started I wanted to thank YouTuber McLean33 for his comment which prompted this video idea. Thanks so much. I used box mac and cheese because these are popular for camping and at home when making a quick side dish. The principles that we discovered for cooking pasta can be applied to your favorite homemade recipe. The two popular brands of mac and cheese that we tested are Annie's and Kraft. For equipment, we will be using the following. A Blue Eddy EB3A portable power station that has a 600 watt inverter and 268 watt hour capacity a new wave pick gold portable induction cooktop these are extremely energy efficient as they heat the pan and not the air since we are on a quest to reduce our electrical energy this works out well for us and keeps the camper cooler at the same time here is a chart that compares the pasta water and sauce the annie's pasta is thicker while the craft is a bent tube that the water can penetrate the center. This results in a bit longer cooking time being specified for the Annie's macaroni since it is thicker. After all the research and testing that I did, the basic way that I cook pasta is to add the pasta to a reduced amount of boiling water, stir, add the other ingredients, turn off the heat, and wait. Now let's watch some video snippets of the Annie's mac and cheese being cooked to demonstrate the process. After the video snippets, I'll have a summary of three different experiments. One where I cook the Kraft mac and cheese as directed on the box. The other two are the modified method using Kraft and the Annie's. Today we're going to figure out if we can cook this Annie's mac and cheese with less water and therefore less energy. I've added 12 and a half ounces of water, which is a cup and a half plus one tablespoon. And temperature of the water is 70 degrees. I'm gonna plug in induction cooktop. It automatically turns to 1500. We want to get that to 600. So we can push watts. Sometimes that doesn't work. Um, if it doesn't, just hit clear and then 600. And we want to make sure we're on medium or lower. If we go to medium high, it will make this overload because this is 600 watts and it's native configuration and that's what we want to use if possible. Okay, so let's get going. We have just 43 watts, which is the standby. So we're gonna hit start. We wanna see how long and how much power it takes to get to boiling. The water's boiling. Let's do a quick check. Do 10 to 11. Gonna go ahead and add in my macaroni. Stir it. I'm gonna bring it back to the boil. And then I'm going to add in my cheese powder, the milk, and the butter. Okay, it's boiling again. I'm gonna just, just stir that. Going to add in my butter, my cheese powder, stir that. Gonna add in my milk. And I'm gonna 
go ahead and shut the power off. Cover. We'll see how long it takes. 62%. 11 minutes so far, 73 watt hours, and I'm going to go ahead and cut this off now to save the standby power. 27 minutes later, let's check it now. We're at 160 degrees. Looks really good to me. Let's taste it. Mm. To me, that's the perfect consistency. The Sandy's mac and cheese is a little bit thicker in the shell than um, a Kraft mac and cheese. We're going to cook that one too, and I'll put the results up. But this is perfect. This tastes just like when I cook it on the stove top per all the directions. As someone raised in the south, all I need to do is add a little bit of pepper and we're done. And I give this a thumbs up. So let's just get our final numbers again. Gonna turn the power station back on. We use, we're 60%, so we used 40%. I have to turn this on to actually get the, the power readings. So we used 75 watt hours. That is phenomenal. The, it does have, you know, just a small amount of liquid in it. I actually like it that way. The other thing is, it's not stuck to the pot at all. Now let's look at the test data and compare the results. For the experiments, as shown in the first column, data was measured and recorded for the pasta type, the water temperature, sauce components, time and energy as the cooking progressed, and finally the energy and power used. Now let's look at the column headings. Kraft mac and cheese was tested per the box instructions as shown in the second column. The third column shows the data when Kraft was made using the modified instructions. The fourth column is the Annie's mac and cheese data for the modified version as well. The fifth column shows the key parameters that were modified and caused the resultant reduced energy and water. This modified method of cooking mac and cheese is a great place to start for your own mac and cheese. In the end, these small modifications drive a greater than 3x energy efficiency and water efficiency. Less than one third of the energy and water are used to make the mac and cheese this way. This method also shows the effectiveness of retained heat cooking. So Katie, why does this work? Starch gelatinization is a property where wheat pasta can absorb water at a range of warmer temperatures. This is what I learned doing this mac and cheese challenge. I learned that I can use a third of the energy and a third of the water to cook box mac and cheese while I'm camping. There's also a lot less dishes. There's only one pan, it's a small pot. There's no sticking and I don't have to bring that big pot with me when we're camping. The traditional method is 10 to 15 minutes faster, but with this modified method, I have much less hands-on time. After it boils, I can go sit by the campfire until the pasta has finished cooking passively. I also learned that I can use a small inverter power station that has a low battery capacity because it just doesn't take that much power to cook this mac and cheese, especially when I'm using an induction cooktop. The energy and water savings are significant and translate over to when I'm cooking with propane 
and even a campfire because I'm not boiling that big pot of water anymore. I have left links in the description box of the video and the first pinned comment in case you want to look at the specification of the devices that I used. Thanks so very much for joining us here at Katie's Camp Kitchen. Hope you're doing well and we'll see you around the campfire very soon.